There comes a time in every man's life where he needs to give up those childish things. And by childish things, I mean bass guitars. And by every man, I mean my husband of nearly 10 years. Uh, this is obviously a joke. I'm not gonna get rid of my husband's bases. That would be cruel and weird and extremely hypocritical for me to do. Uh, but we are gonna go through his bases and I'm going to rate them. My husband has been playing bass since he was in high school uh, and we're about the same age. So though I've been playing guitar a little bit longer, he actually did things like study bass in college for a bit. He's been in bands, his band has opened up for my band. He's played in my band before. So uh, I just am really excited to go through these bass guitars that he's gathered throughout the years because in addition to having a collection of about six bass guitars, uh, <laughs> Some of them are old and weird, and I'm not 100% sure they work. So let's get into it. Welcome to Get Offset. My name is Emily, and I just want you to know how loved you are. My husband's not gonna appear on camera, but he does have a microphone. How are you doing, Rick? I'm doing well. I'm sure he's very excited to do this. He never wants to be on camera, but that's fine. Uh, he doesn't have to be. So let's go ahead and get started, hun. How, do you, what, how are you feeling? Feeling good. Great. This is the first bass. Oof, it's an Ibanez bass, and boy, does that have a reflection. It's an Ibanez five string. Do you remember the, the, it's a Geo. It says the Ibanez old Geo. Geo. And a sound gear? I don't know what any of this stuff means. GSR 205. Let's see if I can get that under this camera. And as you might have seen, if that camera worked, I will be playing these all clean. And with the Earthquaker Devices Blooms, they sent me this Blooms to use in this video. This is not a demo for the Blooms, and I was not paid by Earthquaker, but I'm excited to have a Blooms here to play these through so you get a feel for the clean sound and the dirty sound. So uh, yeah, Rick, what can you tell us about this, this GSR-205? So this was actually my second bass, uh, but I picked it up in the fall of 2003 from a local music store in Columbia, Missouri called Brook Maze. Um, I think I may have put a deposit down on it, but I was, I was very much uh, looking forward to adding a fifth string in my life at the time. Yeah, I don't, I've never really played a five string guitar. Is that the receipt? Can I see that? Yeah. <laughs> oh my God. I always get on my husband about keeping every receipt ever. So this is this is really on brand for him. And I'm really, it's funny to me that this started so early, <laughs> early in his life. It's like, yeah, that's literally the receipt. Your salesperson's name was Matt Tebow. Perhaps a relation to Tim or not. Probably not. Columbia, Missouri, those who know, know. Um, October 10th, 2003. Oh. So yeah, we have receipts. We yeah, have sounds. This this basically became my main player um, for a while. I loved it. I played it hard through several band iterations as well as gigs. So yeah. Nice. So I'm gonna be playing this through um, just the guitar rig seven five string guitars. Something I've literally never done. So uh, oh my god. I can see the point of having that low B string. I really, it's confusing me. Why did you want a fifth string, Rick? Because I was young, a teenager, and I wanted to sound loud. <laughs> sound loud, hit it low, make them feel something. I do want people to know, like I, I showed off the headstock a little bit on the secondary camera, Look at the string, sweetheart. Love of my life. Did you even trim? Did you even trim these these strings? I was before? I was not a trimmer. So yeah, these strings are hilarious, and I honestly, this low B string is filthy as well. So, what are the odds you see the original strings, Rick? Or like like your. I definitely changed them, but again, I was a young teenager and stubborn, and I would sometimes boil the strings before I would replace them. Well, I mean, I don't think that's the weirdest thing. I know that bassists are very particular about their strings, and they don't want them changed very often, 
which, you know, is fine. But this is uh, grimy. Oh, God. I really regret touching it right there, but. Oh, my God. This would require so much practice. At least I played the low B string. I'll tell you what, baby, I am um, not a fan, but you tried to sell this guitar once, I remember. And like, they said there's something wrong with the wiring. So I took it apart to kind of look at it here and everything seems connected, but there's obviously like, that's a tone. Oh, that's the volume. That's a decent taper. That doesn't seem to do anything, but it seems this seems to work just fine. So uh, yeah, don't really know why Guitar Center couldn't get it to work, but they couldn't. Let's try it with the blooms. So there, here are my settings. I'm gonna have to turn the level way down, I think. I'm gonna think, I think I'm gonna stay in that middle too. Yeah, I'm gonna, I'm gonna rank them. But if I had to give this just off the bat a score out of like five, I'd give it like a two. That's fair. That's fair. <laughs> All right. Well, let's go ahead and get to the next one. Oh, this, I, um, another five string. This is a Steinberger headless. So I'm assuming you had to trim these str strings then, Rick? Uh, no, I think they, they kind of just come pre-length because they go bridge into the, where the headstock would be. I don't even know how to tune these. Oh my God. Okay, so it's over here. That's an F. I'm not tuning this. I am so sorry. Like, I am not, I am not, I am not. I have no idea. It's, it's these like things on the end, right? Yeah. They are stuck. At least that low. There you go. That low string is really stuck. Oh my God, so this is one. Oh, okay, I cannot, I physically cannot play this instrument. Let's see how in tune it is with itself at least. I'm sorry guys, like it's, it's not moving. <laughs> These are not moving, uh, some of them. So uh, yeah, I'm gonna give this a one out of 10. Obviously the blooms was still on, so. Are these up? No, these are not all the way up even. I don't even know what to play. I'm not gonna play one string. I'm just out of ideas. That was deeply embarrassing. So I'm gonna give this a zero out of 10. <laughs> I'll give it a one out of 10. But like, I cannot tune these. Is there anything else you wanna tell us about this instrument? Thought you'd never ask. Oh yeah, you're right. I should have just asked. Uh, so this, the story with this one is in high school, I was very big into lots of different music. I went from like hip hop to rap um, and then getting into the rock scene with, you know, grunge, even into like new metal. But then Phil Collins comes along and says, no, Rick, this is what you should be listening to right now. And got into the Phil Collins catalog, which included his time at Genesis ended up buying the Invisible Touch Tour live at Wembley Stadium DVD, played the hell out of that thing. And little did I know, during that concert, I saw this weird looking bass that Daryl Sturmer was playing, amazing guitarist, but he just happened to be playing bass because Mike Rutherford was playing guitar at the time. And I saw Daryl with this slim black bass that had no headstock 
and I was mesmerized. I thought it was so badass and at the same time had no idea how he was able to tune that thing, <laughs> but did not care. Had to have a headless bass after that. So I went on to like musician's friend and placed the order. It was in Kansas City. So I drove, I drove to Kansas City two hours uh, to pick this thing up. Two hours? So the, the, to be clear, this is Spirit by Steinberger. So it's like their Epiphone, their Squire. Is that right? Yeah, it wasn't like the traditional, that slim looking Steinberger um, look that you would normally see, which by the way, um, Daryl sold that bass that was on tour like four years ago on Reverb. It's, I think it sold for like four grand. That's actually not bad though for like some of those Reverb shops. Yeah. All right. Well, uh, thank you for sharing this with me. Do you have the receipt for this one? Mm, I don't think so. Did you leave this outside, by the way? Because again, like I, I'll try to get it under here. There's like some corrosion. I don't on some of those um, on some of those screws right here, sweetheart. Yeah, I don't know. It, it's either either been out being played or in the case. I don't think it's. it's... That could just be like touching the wrong kinds of metal. Or, I don't really know. But uh, let's uh, move on to the next one, which is going to be an adventure. <laughs> This guitar is a nightmare. <laughs> look, everybody, let's, look at this. Look at this situation here. I mean, I've, I've had my, I have had at least one, sh one journey adventure with a router and it, I did a lot better than this. I'm going to be completely honest. This is dusty. This has like some weird, I don't know. Yeah, so you can maybe see it discoloration. I'll try maybe get a picture. But, oh, this looks like, like there's something wrong with the wood. It's kind of chipping out. Oh my God. Again, dusty, no pick guard. You're missing a lot of screws over here, which I, you know, respect and appreciate. <laughs> and you're missing a string. This is so dusty. Why, oh my God, why didn't we dust this first? What can you tell us about this? Um, this is the second one, that's, at least the second one that's been made in Korea. It has a similar um, winding situation. What do you have against wire clippers? Uh, nothing against them. I just never owned a pair in high school. I find it hard to believe there's not a pair of wire cutters in your house or your friend's house or a bandmate's house, but I digress. Oh my God, this low, this like low E string, especially like, I don't even know if that's going to get on camera, but that is honey. Why? Yeah. Tell, talk, talk to me, talk to me about this. Um, yeah. So this one was, a base that was kind of lying around. Um, my buddy Tom and I, we had a friend, I think, who no longer wanted that base. Um, I thought it'd be good to have a four string again. So like, you know, like I mentioned earlier, the first base I had was a four string. Then I swapped that in for a video game system actually before I got that Ibanez. But anyways, this base, it was one that was just ended up lying around between friends' houses, I think at, um, at one point it was at my high school girlfriend's house because we can sort of play drums. So it was very convenient to just have around. We would make a joke. Yeah, we're going to go pick up the Bentley because that sounded cool. Uh, and then, you know, it also allowed me to experiment. As you can see, I did not do anything with the routing. I promise you that. You did the routing? I did not. Okay. I thought you said you, thought you, said you didn't do anything but the routing. I did not do anything with the routing. With the routing. But I did update the or try to update the pick guard i went to a hardware store tom and i got some oh um textured spray paint and you know that of course did not last that long but while the pick guard was off i was like hey look at that kind of green hint color going on you know yeah it's a burst blue. it's a kind of burst oh god this is so gross and so just left it this and was so poorly painted like this burst has like a line going through it but yeah when no wonder there was a pick guard on it in the first place. But it's a it's a player. Once you get the, once is you get it, that other string on and uh, is it a player? Yeah, it would it would it would rock. This has the most output of any of the ones I played so far, honestly. I like that you clearly took a screw out of the pick guard for like the the height adjustment. And then one is just not even, literally not in the body at all. Um, what up with that? You don't remember? 
cannot speak to that. Um, but yeah, not that's not good. No. Let's see if this clips. Good boy was in that key. Yeah, you know, it's not bad. But I'm surprised, oh, I was gonna say it's, it's working now, but when I was tuning it, it wasn't working at all. So, all right, you know, I'm gonna give this a, uh, there's a grounding, there's, oh my God. Okay, again, there's a, Grounding issue, I think. Because that normally it would be fine if I touched like one of these as, as well, but so there's a grounding issue. Shocker, this has some wiring issue. Um, I'll give it. How much did you pay for this? Zero dollars. Oh, for zero dollars? Uh, two dollars for the, for the spray paint. Okay. Um, also, there's no strap button. Like that's that's just that's dead ass just a screw. This is literally just a screw, and there's no strap button over here. Um, I think for free, it was a good buy. <laughs> uh, I think with some love, honestly, this could be okay. It definitely needs a pick guard because this is like, this is a crime against musical instruments. Yeah, I say as someone who has done routing and it was a little bit better than that uh yeah i guess one out of five Ooh, higher than the steinberger i listen the, the problem with the steinberger and i'll, I'll tell I'll, I'll just be straight the problem with the steinberger is that it has clearly corroded in some places that are ma it's making it very very difficult to like turny turn uh like tune it i couldn't tune it so i couldn't really play it so i couldn't get a good vibe on it the, by looks the steinberger would be two out of five at least two out of five. Not my thing. Not my thing. But, but, uh, I couldn't get it to work. So on that note, I think it needs some love. And if you want to continue to play it, I could, we can take a look and maybe fix it up. Sure. Maybe. Okay, uh, let's, let's move along, uh, shall we? Maybe to something greener pastures. Oof, that's more like it. This is a base with which I can jive. It is a Stingray. It's a Sterling by Music Man Stingray. And I was, this is the first one where I was with you when you got it. But what, what do you want to tell us about this one? Yeah, that one I believe I traded in for, I want to say it was like a Marcus Miller five string. You can probably see a theme going on with me in five strings. But again, I wanted something that was um, a nice, reliable four string and um i got really big into the brothers johnson right lewis johnson played on some um of like the biggest pop hits of all time not to mention his his work with his brother right stomp all those classics and he played he played the music man and sounded great and i was like yeah i want that too <laughs> so obviously you've you've never restrung this one uh, this, has been, this has been strung up by professionals, but this was purchased. I, I know where this was purchased and when this was purchased at the base shop or the base store, whatever it's called, that works out of Thunder Road guitars. Yeah. And this was their, I believe it was their second location in West Seattle. It's the one before their current location. And they had their big garage sale. And we saw this there because I didn't really find anything I wanted. Um, but you saw this and we said, oh, let's go. Let's go home. Let's get something to trade in, get a little bit of value. And I talked to an employee. He's like, oh, yeah, I'll give you, a, we'll give you a 70% trade in value usually. And I said, cool, bet, let's go. And then I came back and they were trying to just give you 60% trade in value. I was like, you said 70. And they're like, okay, well, if we said 70. That was like six years ago. I don't know how you remember that. Because I was very proud of getting you a better deal on this instrument. What was I playing? So there are, <laughs> there's a three-way selector on this. 
and four knobs for one humbucker. So I don't. Do you have a favorite position? Um. No. No. That's volume. Oh, I like how these clearly lock in the metal. These tone controls. Yeah, I really like that. Ooh, that's a lot more low. So I'm just gonna keep those in the middle. And that's going to be a 20 year old base in a few years. How do you know? Was there a year on it? Made in San Luis Obispo, California, USA. Wait, this is a Sterling? Yeah, I didn't know that those were ever made. I believe 1997 for that one. Okay. Let's get some dirt. Oof. I think this guitar likes that uh, pedal the most so far. I wish this had flats on it. I feel like this would like rule with flats. Anything else you want to say about this? No, it's great. <laughs> Just the way uh, it is. Active pickup. So I was kind of screwing around with this yesterday and I was like, how does it come out? So I can flip it out and then it, like this part flips up. I don't, nobody cares. I'll just go put it back. <laughs> All right, and I got the next one right next to me. So let's go ahead and. All right, this is. This is one that I got you actually, the base six. I bought this for you and then I kept it for myself, so. Yeah, that's fair. <laughs> so uh, I'm sure you don't have a lot to say about this, but do you have like an opinion on base sixes? Uh, you know, I'm a fan, especially after listening to some of those um, tracks where they got big on like Glenn Campbell, mm. right? Like which is called Lineman, I think. Lineman, I think. Lineman. Yeah, and I think on some Beach Boys songs too. Yeah, for a while the, the, the former bassist of Sunday Crush was playing this. Turn off a strangle switch. The knobs, this is one where I think these are both all the way up, these knobs. And I know that uh, Mike Adams would be bothered by this. They're not in the same place and I've never, like, you know, I do lots of mods and change things. I've not done a thing to this instrument. Um, I don't think the former bassist did either. Um, but yeah, we have the, the three-way, the each pickup has its own on or off switch. And then there's that strangle switch, master tone, master volume. I don't have the trim arm, but. Somebody said that we should do a song where it's bass six and tenor guitar. And I do think that would be funny, but like, I don't think, I don't think an actual bassist would like this as much. Well, how did like, because it's so much like guitar spacing. You can talk. Yeah, you don't really get much real estate. I kind of like it for stuff where there's a lot of movement just because I'm more used to that, obviously. But yeah, I, I really do get that. <laughs> I don't know what I was trying to do there. That's actually quite painful. These strings are a little dry. This, this instrument could use some love, but that's, it's just, it's fun. Yeah, uh, so with the pedal. <laughs> 
This is this is indeed a, a fun instrument. I like it. So yeah, let's get to one that actually is for you that you've played and you've played most recently. It's the last one. Let's go. <laughs> this is one of, I just realized, Rick, this is one of two sparkly purple bases we own in this, in this house, that exist in this household, I should say. Keep it coming. Keep it coming. This is an actual Music Man Stingray, not the Sterling, an actual Music Man five string with the two humbuckers. You were very specific and clear about like what you really wanted in a bass. And I worked with my friends at Music Man to get this. This was made specifically for you. And I thank you. So this was uh, essentially like a 35, 35th birthday present. Um, I guess I kind of know a little bit more about it. I made sure to get it in Amethyst Purple. Again, the two humbuckers. It has the same switching, but actually it's five-way switching. And then of course the tone, the three band tone control and the volume. So, yeah, is there anything you want to say about this? Um, thank you. I do not deserve it. Yes, you do. Shut up. But I do love Shut it. Shut up. You, you deserve it. I legitimately don't know what to do with a fifth string. Like, they are, they are foreign to me. Oh my God, where am I going? the third purple bass we own because I own a purple Dan Electro Longhorn bass that Naveed Elliott told me. So we have a lot of purple basses and zero purple guitars and I am feeling very mentally confused by that because purple is my favorite color. It's here to stay. It's here to stay. And it has the gold hardware too. I like this is just such a handsome instrument. I got the strap to go with it. I think it's one of the Ernie Ball Jacquard straps, but I'm not entirely sure. It doesn't actually say Ernie Ball on it, so I'm not. Oh yeah, it does. It says it right there. Ernie Ball. Ernie Ball. Um, yeah, this is such a sick instrument. The strings actually feel really good. They still feel pretty new. But this is what you've gigged with when you've gigged with my band Sunday Crush. Yeah, and it plays it plays really great. The neck, it just there's no friction. No friction. Yeah, it's that satin finish. And it's a beautiful color. I, you know, I think, I guess it's ro roasted maple. But yeah, when I went to the San Luis Obispo Ernie Ball factory with some former coworkers, um, we, I don't think you, had this even been delivered yet? I don't think so. No. Okay. So <laughs> yours was probably like drying and curing the paint up there. Um, but just to go and see that Ernie Ball factory in slow was really cool. The attention to detail that they pay, pay to every single instrument. Like they had this big bin of like rejected stuff. And I was picking up a few parts. I'm like, what's wrong with this? And they're like, oh, um, yeah, you see that little line there? Like maybe like you could just like paint over it, but it's just not up to our, our standards. And like they're, the, the things that they, they do for environmentalism that they don't even really advertise. I, I just really love the company. Um, I think the guitars, though they are like expensive, I find them to be really worth it. And their Sterling stuff punches well above its weight. I still like, every part of me recognizes that this is a better bass and the Sterling guitars I've played versus the Ernie Ball Music Man guitars, the Music Man is, all, is, is the better instrument and I can see why it's more expensive, but not everybody needs those really nice finishes. I don't know. What do you, what do you think, hon? I mean, I'll, t I'll take it all day, of course. Um, but yeah, anything, anything related to music band, just from my experience, it's been, it's been fantastic. Yeah, I agree. Nope. I think it's like five string basses are very much in that same 
wheelhouse of like a baritone guitar. But for some reason they just like really trip me up more than a baritone guitar does. When you started playing a five string, how long did it take you to get used to the fifth string? Uh, I don't think it took, I mean, it's been years, but I don't think it took me that long. I was just like, hey, welcome to the party. Burn. If I put you on the spot and handed this to you and did not make you get on camera, would you play something? Well, I was just going to ask you, did, does the fifth string add weight to the ultimate rating you're going to give it? Oh, I didn't rate the last two. The Sterling, four out of five. Four out of five. This is a five out of five. I'm not going to judge the fifth string because that's a user choice. Um, this is a five out of five bass, clearly. Like, I don't think that you can get much better than this, honestly. I play a lot of short scales, and those are just by their very nature generally not the highest quality instruments because they were made for women and intermediate basses. There are definitely some very high quality Fender Mustangs and stuff, Mustang basses, but they, they, I think they pale in comparison to like what you get if you're getting like a P bass or a jazz bass. So honestly, like I would just like to see people make more like really high quality short scale basses, but that's, that's, that's a, a rant that I felt like going on at this moment. I welcome it. Yeah, so it didn't take any time at all to get used to. I don't, I don't remember it taking that much time. Yeah, so again, the Sterling, four out of five. The base six, I'd give that a three out of five just because, uh, you know, it's a Squire base six. There's some kind of weird things with it. Um, I find the intonation to be a little odd, which I can fix, obviously. If someone started making these new bridges, I'm really excited about. Um, I really want to get one for the base six, but they're like $260, so maybe I'll have to wait. But yeah, this is a five out of five. So um, let me let me rank them from worst to best. This, the, the Steinberger is my sixth spot. Ouch. <laughs> the Bentley is my four. No, five. Bentley is my five spot. And then the Ibanez is the, the fourth spot. Then it goes basics, Sterling, Stingray, and then number one, this is S tier guitar, bass guitar. I mean, it's it's this amethyst sparkling purple. Like this is, oof, look at that go. Sweetheart, can you reach my purple, my purple bass so we can um, just kind of compare them? They're laying around the house like cats, like. Okay. So this is ugh, my purple bass. This is yours. I think mine sparkles a bit more. Turn around the back so we can just get the paint job. Oops, you can see most of it. So yeah, oh, I mean these sparkle, this this looks great on the stage, I can confirm. I've seen it. It's very prominent sparkles. I think, I think that deep purple gives it that contrast. I think you're right. I don't think it's the fairest thing to compare the two. Uh, the, the, the paint on this though, on, on yours is flawless. There are some spots on mine where I'm like, yeah, I can see why the guy was like, I wanna redo it. I just, wanted my, I just wanted my instrument back. So thank you so much, Rick. And thank you for being a part of this video. Rick is, you know, not interested in being on the camera, though he has been on the camera before. Well, thank you again, Rick. I know he's a little, he doesn't wanna be on camera. I don't wanna call him camera shy, unless he would call himself that. 
No, okay. <laughs> no response, no response at all. Please consider using the Sweetwater affiliate link in the video description. That's a great way to support the channel doing things that let's be honest with ourselves and each other, we were probably going to do anyway. And if I was smart, I would have said that earlier in the video. Please consider checking out one of the other videos on the screen. If you liked this, you'll love those. One will be the video about that Bronco base because that is a journey I want to take you on. Please like, comment, subscribe, tell your favorite brands about us. And until next time, thanks for watching. Thanks for understanding. My name is Emily. Goodbye.